And lastly, how can we end fluoridation? The four simple facts and one realization that opened my mind in 1996. Number one, there's not a single process in the human body that needs fluoride to function properly. And I speak as my main training has been a biochemist. Not one single biological, biochemical reaction in the human body needs fluoride. It's not an essential nutrient. Sometimes the other side will say that, but it is not. And they have no evidence to back up that it is a nutrient. On the other hand, it's very clear that there are many biological processes which are uh, interfered with by fluoride, always given uh, the adequate concentration, of course. That's always a caveat. But we know that fluoride inhibits enzymes, switches on G proteins, done, does all kinds of things. It's not something that you want in your body if you can possibly avoid it. The single most important fact for me was this one. How extremely low the level of fluoride is in mother's milk. 0 0.004 parts per million. Now the other side sometimes says, oh, fluoride is everywhere, it's in all the water supplies, it's in the sea, yes, yes. Don't you realize then what a stupid thing this is? Because nature has told you that the baby does not need fluoride. Are you telling me after millions of years of evolution that every pregnant woman, every mother in the world has an inadequate supply of fluoride for her baby. That somehow that nature has screwed up on baby's first meal. I do not believe it. And I do not believe that a bunch of dentists in Chicago knows more about what the baby needs than uh, mother nature herself. You know, I actually gave the, uh, somebody, uh, the chief health officer of Victoria in Australia. I said, tell me Dr. Hill, I think it was Hill, Dr. Hill, if fluoride was good for the baby, it was important for the baby's development, teeth or anything, why is it so low in mother's milk? You know what he said? So mother nature has dealt some children a raw deal. What this means, of course, in practical terms, is that a bottle-fed baby in a fluoridated community like Seattle is getting between 175 and 300 times the fluoride dose that nature intended. This is the most serious thing that we're doing right now. A huge gamble was taken in 1950 when the US Public Health Service endorsed fluoridation. Not only had not one single trial had not been completed, but they had no idea that fl what fluoride would do to the baby's bones, the baby's brains, the baby's endocrine system. No idea at all. And yet they went ahead. That's a huge, reckless gamble. The government has the audacity to give us this legacy. The legacy of this practice for every single one of you here is a lifelong, up to this point, a lifelong accumulation of fluoride in your bones. And they really don't know Again, it's another gamble. They really don't know if the levels of fluoride in your bones are going to reach the levels which they do in India and China and cause horrible symptoms. The first symptoms of fluoride's poisoning of the bones is just like arthritis, stiffness of the joints, pains in the joints, pains in the bones. And as it accumulates still further, the bones get harder and more brittle. And we still don't have anybody in the United States who's had 70, 80, 90 years of this fluoride accumulating in their bones. What, they, what we know is that 40 to 60 percent of the fluoride is excreted by the kidney each day, but the rest accumulates in our bones and is steadily increasing over a lifetime. The realization is simple. We should never use the public water supply to deliver medical treatment. We've never done it with any other substance, nutrient, mineral, medicine. We've never used the public water supply to do, as a delivery system for these things. Why? Because once you put it in the water, you can't control the dose. That's absolutely essential. Everybody knows that. Every time you go to the doctor, you get a prescription. What do they tell you? Take three tablets a day or whatever. 
Secondly, you can't control who gets the medicine. It's totally indiscriminate. It goes to people with poor diet, with poor health. It goes to babies. It goes to the very old. It goes to people that already have compromised because they've got low iodine intake or they've got poor kidney function. It goes to everybody. Completely indiscriminate once you put it in the water. It violates the individual's right to inform consent to medication. Unethical. Unethical. This is well established. Go to the webpage of the American Medical Association and read about what informed consent requires.